yeah, here we are. <laughs> Did you sing? Oh, yeah, we in a not choir? need a hallelujah cro- uh, chorus on this one. Oh, 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 oh. <clears throat> okay. <It's> a... <clears throat> <laughs> you play high, I'll play low. Okay. <laughs> Tracy, how are you? How are you doing? Oh my goodness, I'm good. I'm I'm being a little playful right now. Yeah, I I Please am good. Careful. How are you? How are I you? am. I'm excited. I'm excited. I am. I am pumped. I'm alive. I am. Whew, I'm blessed. Mm-hmm. I am. Shoot, I can take on the world right now, Tracy. I'm telling you, I can take on the world because uh, I, we, we'll talk. You, you hear it. You hear it. I, saw, you? I hear some ownership going on over here. Sister, sister, sister. And you got the haircut and you just yeah what is that uh, aerodynamic so there's no there's no stopping you the wind can't even stop you <laughs> so hey got the cold de sacs going on here or you got to come in there see if you want to go and then keep going <laughs> i'm embracing it <laughs> love it that's what we need to do work with it work with it yep, right yep yep let me get now I'm disappearing here, right? You got you yeah, got the talking head, literally. Gotcha. Um, I got to do a couple of things down here, but we got to get the notes going because I I think not I think I know it's going to be a a great talk today. Uh, what's going on with you, Tracy? What's going on with you? Well, this has been a busy week, right? Most of us are back to school this week. Right. So for all you out there with kids who just went back to school, well, went back to school, right, virtually. Um, Although my family, so my brother and my sister-in-law are in Denver, and I was just talking to the kids a couple weeks ago. Um, My niece turned seven, and so Uh we called her on the phone, and I said, so are you guys looking forward to school and all that? Yeah. And Tracy, we're going back. I'm like, you're going back physically? (laughs) And my nephew was so cool. He's so funny because he's like, yeah, we're going to go back and we have to wear our masks and all this. And he says, and, and there's no air conditioning. I'm like, there's no air conditioning. He says, no, no, no. I mean, they have air conditioning, but they're not going to turn it on because circulation that can, yeah. And I'm like, oh, that sounds, I didn't say it, but I'm like, oh God, that sounds miserable. Welcome. (laughs) Welcome. the masks and no good, but Denver is a little less humid. A yeah. lot less humid than is here, yeah. so AC. Yeah. Without AC, they'll probably be fine. I said, you know what you should do, James? You should ask them. You should petition for being able to wear your bathing suits to school and during during recess, be able to run through the sprinklers. He's like, oh, Aunt Tracy, I'm totally going to ask if we can go. Oh, Aunt like, Tracy. Don't start getting those Aunt kids Tracy, in trouble. you're getting them in trouble. <laughs> ah, you're talking about school. Eef, I had to take my son um, on campus. So NCANT on last week, Wednesday, we took him the previous weekend, set the dorm up, put some disco lights up there. I don't know why nice. we did that, but hey. Um, <laughs> um, and then it's, we, it's a new era. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I hope he doesn't have hmm, parties up in there. Uh, but you never know. Well, uh, <laughs> we, and we- Come on, college, we took college. Him, we, I know, we took him on Wednesday for him, okay, we took him on Wednesday for him to, to stay, and um, I'm being a strong dad and going, uh, you know, um, son, it's, it's time, and then a little trickle wanted to come, I was like, go back, go back, go back, <laughs> um, and then we, 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 <laughs> we, we leave home. And then we get home and I'm, we're in the, I'm in the bathroom. And I'm going, gosh, this kid isn't here anymore. He's, he's kind of, he's out of the house. It's only going to pop in here for a couple of weeks and then he's out. Um, he made breakfast every Saturday mornings. Breakfast in bed for my wife and I. He, and my daughter's superb too. I mean, but I'm talking about my son now. So um, I know people be like, oh, you got a daughter too. I'm like, yeah, I do. But I'm talking about my son now. That's right. He and, gets to be front stage right now. Yes. And he would make breakfast and I, I could call him at any time. He would get up and do stuff. Um, last night, I, I sent a text to, so we have a group text, family text. 
And my son said, please get me off this. I'm like, nah, man, you will know what's happening in this house. So I texted my daughter and said, hey, uh, four strawberries, a handful of blueberries, two teaspoons, tablespoons of oatmeal, and I'm giving her instructions for a smoothie. And uh, I didn't hear anything back. But uh, 30 minutes later, I hear her bathe and I knock on the bathroom door. Hey, did you fix the smoothie? I didn't see the text. And I'm like, gosh, my son isn't here. Because if my son was here, that smoothie will be made. <laughs> Delivered, already drank. <laughs> well, that's, that's when you talked about the school thing. You know, that's why I, I, it hit me. I'm like, okay, school took him. Uh, mm. But how's your daughter? Did she, did she start? She did start. So she actually started today officially. She had one class virtually at 8.45 this morning. I'm like, woo, rough schedule. But tomorrow they're going to be back full time. They're really trying to ease them in. Gotcha. Um, and so it's great. But yeah, she, she is excited because she just turned 13. So she literally, you know, they're starting early this year. So normally she would have, you know, a couple weeks before, well, like a, a weekend and then a full week before school starts. Uh -huh. Now it's like it was the, literally the last weekend before the school week started. And so she had a little blowout 13 year old oh, tent party. Wow, 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 wow. Go girl, go girl, go girl. Everybody was in their own separate tents. Like, I mean, our backyard looks like a tent community. <laughs> oh, really? So <laughs> it totally does. Barbara Hemphill just hit us with mask and no AC. Sounds horrible. I know. Yes, Barbara. <laughs> Barbara, I'm with you, man. That's what I was thinking. I was like, oh, somebody needs to be doing some sprinkler time. Like, there's got to be a way in here. Like, you can't be having the kids all day doing that and not giving them some sprinkler time. So how's so. you? Was, so I see the hair. The last time it was back, right? I mean. Yeah, yeah, I've got. Hair all. I've got my hair, you know, like you can't be wearing your hair the same. True. You gotta, you gotta show up. Well, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I got hair to work with, Leslie. <laughs> I gotta, sis, come on, look, I, this thing, I can grow this thing so fast. You wouldn't start even doing, I want to come forward. Don't make know. me, don't make me come on here with my Afro wig. You know what? I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do like that. Like last time, that. Tracy was telling me I didn't have hair to work with. This time, <laughs> I got too much. I got all the hair. What's on Don't your even mind? Don't notice Tracy's hair right now because you got my hair on camera. What's yeah, on I your was... mind, Tracy? What's on your mind? What's on your mind? So this week has been. Has Did been I stop really... you from saying something? Because I, I think you were about to say something and I jumped in there. So please continue. Probably not. <laughs> Not important. I'm like, I don't know no. what I was going to say. <laughs> I can feel it. I can fill in lag time like no one's business. So it's probably not important. But yeah, this week. So today, the reason my hair is like this uh -huh. is I, uh, I I did a back to back. So I did a presentation. I was so honored to be asked to speak to Alia, which is the international um, group of people who are in events, right? So these are event planners, okay. DJs. You know, anybody who has to do with events and, you know, you can, as you can imagine, their, their industry was really hard hit. Correct. With COVID. And, you know, a lot of them are out of work. A lot of them are trying to just figure out what comes next. Um, mm. And yet they're still, they're, they're, they're still moving forward. And this is a really lot. This, so this is chapter Raleigh Durham chapter. So there's chapters all over the world. Correct. I think it's, I think it's, yeah, it's international. So um, so I was asked to be their first virtual speaker. They normally would have these, I think it was like quarterly blowouts. Like you can only imagine the events arena, like they would have blowout parties, the ice sculptures, the whole, I mean, huge, you know, sometimes flying in speakers and all that kind of, you know, went away. They can't get in touch. They can't, they can't, you know, get together those large numbers mm -hmm. in person. So they, they, turned it over to the virtual arena and uh, and I was the first speaker that they had this congrats, year. The virtual congrats, arena, so. congrats. Yeah, so it was really fun. Great group of people, amazing, dedicated group of people, very, you know, high hope and making it work. And mm. so, yeah, it was a real honor. Mm. So I did that last night. That was a great conversation. And then I turned around and at 7.30 this morning, I uh, gave a different presentation to a, to another group. So, so I've got, yeah, I got the, I got the full hair hey, going. <laughs> hey, hey, you got a full hair to fly. 
Presentation hair. Yep. <laughs> wow. Wow. Congrats. Congrats. That's that's exciting when you when you get into new markets, I would say, right? New a new segment, but still have the same niche that we talked about the last time, right? Leaders and you know, visionaries and setting that course for them. Uh, that's that's exciting. So what did you talk about? So last night it was about zone of genius. And kind of some of this, yeah, I know, I love that. I, that. I could talk about that all night long. I had only 45 minutes, so I had to make sure it was in that period of time. And I tried to have fun with it. You know, it was more of a TED Talk type, you know, talk. It wasn't so much, you know, like the standard webinar kind of talk gotcha. um, or training. It was more, you know, to be engaging and inspirational and, right. and you know, informational as well. But so that was fun because I got to put together my slideshow and I was like, huh, if I was doing a TED talk, you know, what kind of slides would I want? So that was a lot that I actually really enjoyed that. That was a creative outlet for me over the weekend. That's excellent. And then we talked last time you and I spoke, remember I was talking about owning that space and like saying, you know, I work with visionaries and that kind of, so in this morning's talk, the, the guy who was supposed to introduce me was not prepared and he didn't have his notes. So he's like, oh shoot. He's like, Tracy, can you just introduce yourself? So I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I'm telling everybody and I'm like, I just put it out there. I said, I work with visionary leaders, right? So specifically visionaries are very different kinds of folk. And I kind of gave a little blurb about, you know, visionaries sometimes working with them is like herding cats, but there's a reason for that, mm -hmm. you know, is that they, there's a certain environment that visionaries need in order to do what they came here to do and do it well. Right. Do you know, like five minutes after I got off that talk, because there's a little bit of, you know, Q&A afterwards and some networking. And five minutes later, I get this, this email from one of the participants. And he's like, oh my gosh, I'm a visionary leader. I am struggling with this, that, and the other thing. It's everything you hit on in that little sentence. <laughs> I need to talk to you, right? If I hadn't just said it, Correct. right? Correct. He, you know, it wouldn't have necessarily sparked that that piece. And, and so it, it's kind of fun to be in these arenas more and more where, you know, I can actually remind people, this is what I do. Um, so that was kind of, that was kind of neat. You know what, you, you just, you, you, you touched on something just on that. I, I, so when you, as you were talking, I, I, I got it and I'm like, Ooh, yes, that's what in the moments. So, Hey, we say eavesdrops in the moment conversations that extra, uh, um, extemporaneous speaking, the things that happen when you speak from your heart rather than from paper, the moments where you are, uh, are, are just being yourself, being organic and not scripted. Your, your truth just oh. oozes up to the top. Hey, I hear myself talking. <laughs> your truth oozes out and the, what needs to be heard is heard at the moment. So yes. um, I had a conversation with a, a, a lady this morning, thinking as a client, but got introduced and I get on, before I get on the call, I pray and say, you know, God, because every call, God, let me be um, intentional. I don't want to come here daily dallying, intentional and strategic. So I put my, 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 uh, my, what you call all my 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 conversation points that I'm gonna have in there for prospective clients. And I go, well, welcome to to the call. You know, this is a get acquainted call where we will go over how I can help you with if I can. It's not a sales call, da 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 da. And she says, Well, you know, I I know I wanted to talk to you about that, but the person who introduced us said that, you know, just get to know Woolwin. I'm like, oh. Excellent. I said, that's good. I said, I'm, I'm adaptable. Um, and we start to talk and lo and behold, the call is just what she needed and what I needed. And the conversation did not even touch business. It touched it for a second or two, but it was more what she was saying and what wisdom that I had that God had given me to share word of knowledge or, um, you know, a prophecy that was given to her. And we're on the phone. I mean, we're on Zoom looking at each other like, did we, 
did we really just have this conversation? I just got to know you and you told me everything about your past and everything about you in this one hour. In fact, it was 50 minutes. And I bring that to say, it's so important for, for us to, to sometimes leave room for error. And when I say error, leave room for that organic piece, leave room for, for you to speak your truth and not speak your script. Because in speaking that truth, in speaking your, your, your moment, I would say speak your moments. When you speak your moments, there are people listening who, you know, um, destiny catchers, um, people who want to catch something that you're saying, they are listening. And if it's so scripted, you would go on a script and that person wouldn't be privy to hear that which comes from your heart. Mm, I love that. You know, it's what I feel too, is it captures the brilliance and brilliance is, is a co-collaboration between what's within us and what God intends for us to be as a mouthpiece. And that's where, you know, people get to hear brilliance. It reminds me of, um, so his book, uh, originals, Adam Grant has a part where he's talking about Martin Luther King Jr.'s I have a dream speech. Mm -hmm. Have you ever read that book? What is it, Adam Grant? Uh, it's called Originals. It's actually about visionaries. It's about visionary leaders. And he, he uses famous visionary leaders of the past to make the points that he wants to make about visionaries Tracy, and the importance give me, of them. Give me that name again, Adam Grant, and the name of the book? Originals. Originals. And I'm just typing it in there for people to, um, in the comment box. For people Thank to you. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. So he talks about Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream speech. And he said, you know, he spent two months preparing that speech with his speechwriters. And then, of course, when he got up to, to do the speech, you know, he, he started with it. And then the woman in the audience, you know, yells out, Martin, tell them about the dream. And from that point on, everything was ad lib. But what Grant talks about is that he said, you know, his famous uh, history, I guess there's people who their job is literally to go back in history mm-hmm. and rate well-known quote, like, like speeches. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm like, I want that job. That'd be fun. <laughs> but the, when, when, when these analyzers or the, the analysis was done, because we have the copy of their original speech, mm-hmm. on the speech he gave compared to the speech he wrote, they said that the speech he wrote wouldn't have gone down in history as anything special, right? But the speech that came from his heart and came from the moment is classic, right? It, it, it's gone down in history and then some. And so that's really that piece. And, you know, when they say we prepare, we're not supposed to be preparing to do the verbatim, mm. right? We're preparing so that we know we have the ground and earth you know, strongly and firmly beneath us and we can just take off and fly and be in the moment and say what comes through, you know? And so I always remember that when I'm giving talks, it's like, I never want to memorize what it is I want to say. Cause I mean, I think we can get, our ego gets attached to the language. Mm. He goes like, Ooh, that's a good sentence. I want to remember to say that. That's the ego in us. That's like, I want to deliver the perfect Speech, like, I, I don't want to step on any toes, but I'm going to say something here because it's authentic. So there is, a, and I won't mention any names, but there is a local, or there was, I mean, uh-huh. up until now, I don't know how it's going to run now, but there's a local um, company that put on this uh, speaking engagement event. And mm-hmm. so it was kind of a coupleship between speakers and their and giving them the opportunity to get up in front of a live audience gotcha. and have it videotaped so they can use it for promotional reasons yep. and practice and the audience to be there to, to witness speakers and, you know, be a part of these videos and stuff. So um, I went to it a couple of years ago and these speakers were polished. I mean, they had to be, they had exactly a certain period of time. I think it was like 15 minutes to deliver mm-hmm. A, you know, a succinct speech that was making a point about something. So it needed to be practiced. But what I remember thinking, watching speaker after speaker, because boy, they just turned and burned them, mm-hmm. is they're polished, 
they had just the right pause at just the right moment. And you know mm -hmm. what I found myself doing after like the second or third one, mm -hmm. I was so distracted by the artificiality yes. that I missed the message. I was like, wow. I was kind of looking at how they pause and do all this. And I was like, what, what do they say? It was too poised. It was too perfect. Yes. And as a human being, I mean, it's what Brene Brown said in her vulnerability TED Talk. She's like, as much as we think we're supposed to practice and become near bulletproof and perfect before we enter the arena and get in, on stage, once we do, we realize that's not what the world wants from us because nobody's bulletproof and perfect. And so we can't relate. Mm. Mm. And we get distracted by the unrelatability. You mm. know, years ago, I had a guy come up to me. I've told this story, like, I think here, I'm not sure. I wrote a blog on it years ago, but he came to one of my presentations. And this was before I started to do a lot of heart work and opening up to my emotional intelligence and, and getting out of my head and into my gotcha. real self. Gotcha. And he came to a presentation and he said to me, I'm looking for a coach and I've done some research and you, you know, I've talked to people who've worked with you and you've come highly recommended, yada, yada. Would you be willing to talk to me after your presentation? Because I think I'd like to work with you. Mm hmm did my presentation. He walked up to me afterwards, handed me his card. He says, I've chosen not to work with you. If you'd like to know why, give me a call. And he walked away. Mm -hmm. And at the gist of it, when we sat down for coffee, he said to me, you're too perfect. Mm -hmm. you, you're not available. I, I can't relate to you. Mm. I watched your entire you know, presentation was like perfect. You look perfect. You act perfect. Your Q&A was perfect. He's like, you don't, you're not real. Yes. He says, I know you're real underneath all that, but you're not coming across as accessible to me and if somebody is going to be supporting me and guiding me to come and get to the deepest place the most vulnerable place within me it can't be somebody who's not doing it themselves wow wow you know um <clears throat> so what what i'm trying to incorporate in this now is i'm looking at comments right i'm looking at comments because i want to draw the audience in you know it's eavesdrop like it. it's eavesdrop but they, they are eavesdropping and, and, and commenting i and I will, I will jump on a couple where a couple people said, uh, but it's, we, we talked last week about the last two weeks ago about spirituality, right? And I think the spirituality aspect is, you know, the, the we're not saying don't be prepared, be prepared, <laughs> know your subject matter understand what the arena you're stepping in, um, what, what, what it entails. Sometimes you have to be prepared, true, but leave room for humanity. <laughs> um, see, Barbara, 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 you no, know we got to give Barbara a hat. We got to start doing an eavesdrop job hat or eavesdrop. Barbara job. would look great in a hat, I'll tell Barbara, you. <laughs> Barbara, Barbara is hidden this comment. She says, well, what you were talking about, giving the Holy Spirit an opportunity to speak. Um, she also did talk about the what you were talking about earlier, and it went it went it scrolled up. But when you when you get in an arena, like what we're doing here, we don't know what we're about to speak on, but we do know we have words, and these words when we lace them together, they will make a sentence. They will make a thought the thought, a sentence, and then a paragraph, and then we'll have, huh, let's see. We've spoken today about X, and that's what we name it, right? But we don't know who's listening, who will listen. You don't know who will listen to you. You don't know where, where you will turn, turn out or up in, in your, your, your verbiage. But I think the idea is letting that spiritual aspect take control of this physical because am i going to go deep yeah i want to go deep hey, of course you are i'm going to go deep i a couple a couple of days ago i i got up to meditate and and as soon as i sat down tracy the word acceleration came god said you know acceleration i'm like acceleration okay acceleration let me let me so study acceleration so I, I go in and I, I i study in the morning i get up 
So this was 2 a.m. And then by 9, 10, I get up and say, you know what, let me study acceleration. And I studied acceleration and I see um, it's 1 Kings 18, I think, 46, time Ahab and Elijah, uh, no rain had come. There's the, and this, I don't know where I'm going with this. I'm being led to talk this. So permit me to talk this. This is eavesdrop. This is you and I on a conversation like it. Y'all, y'all gotta listen. Um, <laughs> so, <Or not. laughs> I know, yeah, or not, right? <laughs> but but um, Elijah tells Ahab, "Hey, dude, uh, rain's coming now because there had been a, 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 a couple years of no rain. Rain's coming, so eat, drink, and go to Jezreel. Now they're on Mar Mount Carmel." It's roughly about 17 to 25 miles away from Mount Carmel to Jezreel. And he says, eat and, and go there. Elijah puts his head down between his legs, it says, and he tells his servants, go and look. Go and look, there's a rain cloud. Seven times he goes and looks. Six times, the seventh time he sees a fist, something as small as a fist. And he runs back to Elijah and says, Elijah, I see something. He says, okay, good. Ahab, run, get on your chariot, carry your chariot and your horse and go to Jezreel. Now, Elijah's still there. The chariot, you know, the king has, he may have had an Arabian horse or a uh, uh, a, a horse that was the best of the best. So it could speed up and go wherever it went. So the guy, the king goes ahead and Elijah girds himself. He girds himself and he runs. He gets to the king, passes the king and gets to Jezreel before the king. Acceleration. And this morning I'm studying and it hits me, Tracy. Tracy, I'm telling you, I don't know why I'm saying this, but I know why I'm saying it. Um, rain constitutes, this is our, our spirit allowing us to speak. Rain constitutes a blessing, right? A downpour. This is something that they have been praying for. They have prayed for it and prayed for it and prayed for it. Now it's coming. But Elijah tells this king, run to Jezreel so the rain doesn't stop you. So there's a position that you have to be in to receive the blessing. And mostly it's not a physical position, it's a spiritual position. Get in that spiritual position, Jezreel, which by the way means, I looked at it, God sows. Where God is going to sow into you, Tracy, run to that position, get to that place, so that when the blessing comes, it doesn't stop you. Most times, oh, Thank you, God. Most times when we talk about the blessing, we think that, oh, God, give me a blessing. And we prayed for this rain and prayed for this rain. However, we're not in the spiritual position to receive this rain. So gird yourself. What's, what's, what does gird mean? Encircle. Um, make yourself, put a belt around you. Protect. And that place that, oh. So many things are hitting me now, and I'm going to give you a moment just now to, to, to feed in, because I feel you got some feeders. Um, when he put his head down between his legs, was he looking physically? No. He was looking spiritually of a physical manifestation. So in order for you to see this vision, this thing that's coming to you, you got to put yourself in a place in a secret place. And in that secret spiritual place, you start to see physical things. And people are there around you. And when you say, hey, this is about to happen to me. I'm about to be an author. I'm about to get on. They go, huh, you? Hey, don't listen to what they're saying. Because as you're in that spiritual place and you're seeing it, just in case you say some, tell somebody, hey, Go and look, go and see, this is coming for me. And 
If you tell me, Tracy, and I said, Tracy, I don't see nothing, girl. I don't see nothing. You're on mute. Maybe it's on for a reason, but you, 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 you tell us to go there and we say, Tracy, you're a liar. And I, but Tracy, you've been in that meditating. You've been seeing it. There are some people in our lives who they don't see it. But if they stay just a bit longer for seven times to go keep looking for this thing that we see, when it thus come, we have to be in that spiritual position to receive that acceleration and get it. Now, what does that, all of that mean? Tracy, dear, the turmoil you've been through, the turmoils I've been through, the, the prayers, the meditations, and those of you who are listening, you've been through, and people don't see it. <laughs> Just pause, just wait a while. Wait a while, stay in that secret place, put your head down. And as soon as it comes, you will know where you have to be spiritually and physically for this downpour to come. And I, and I, and I declare this on you, Tracy sister, you know, that's why you're doing all the things you're doing and you're about to get to this place where that downpour comes and where that downpour comes for me and where that downpour comes for you who's listening. And I get off the pulpit. I'll tell you what, that is exactly, that's a perfect example of the brilliance we were just talking about. Like you <laughs> just demonstrated. Mm. Being in the moment and letting the spiritual mm. message come through. Mm. I mean, it's, mm. and for people who may be listening and, and maybe you're not spiritually oriented, you know, this is the same thing. We can apply this to, because what I heard in you, in what you were saying is the readiness, right? That we don't think about that. People say, I want love, I want love, I want love. And then love shows up and they're not ready to receive it. And then they wonder why they don't have the love that they're looking for, right? We don't, it's not just about asking, it's about preparing. We don't just plant the seed, we have to prepare the soil, right? And the preparation, so yes, preparation is important, right. but to the point that Adam Grant makes in originals, mm -hmm. the delivery uh -huh. gets to be where we position ourselves just right, and then mm. we surrender. Mm. Then we release. We don't get up there and, and stay in our heads and like, okay, what was it that I perfectly prepared to perform? No, performance is not about the perfect you know, ability to remember verbatim Correct. performance. I mean, they've seen this. If you look at this great book called resonate mm -hmm. and it talks about great orators, people in history, well, even now, you know, people who just deliver messages so beautifully and what they all have in common is they're not in their heads. I mean, not to right. say that they don't bring sometimes data and statistics and research and all that to the table, but they know their craft so well. Yes. These are numbers that are, that are there constantly. They're not memorized per se, they're known. And there's a difference when we can deliver from what we know. And this is why staying in genius is important because brilliance comes from brilliance. Correct. When we're staying in our brilliance, we get to deliver brilliance. And part of that is trust. We have to trust in what we know and we have to trust that that's what we're here to present, right? That's what we're here to perform, so to speak. You know, is this great symphony that's a collaboration between spirit or whatever you think, you know, helps you do what you do this. and your own brilliance, right? And so I think, again, we focus so much on the perfect and I have to keep going back to that, is that there's no way you could have written that, that you just said mm -mm. before mm -mm. you delivered it. Mm -mm. No. It wouldn't have been so timely. There's somebody who, who you hit like an arrow through the middle part of their forehead, mm -hmm. which is how I felt when that guy told me why he can't, couldn't work with me. Correct. I didn't know why, but I knew he was right. Correct. And it just, it felt like that because the timeliness was perfect and it changed the entire trajectory at that mm -hmm. point forward of my life. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Because I chose to pick it up and run with it. I chose to take that information and do something with it. Right. So that's the other piece is that, again, receiving is about then taking what we receive and choosing to put action to it. Maybe the action is to put it back down because it doesn't resonate. Correct. Maybe the action is to pick it up and put it aside for later because the timing doesn't seem right. Mm -hmm. 
maybe it's to pick it up and run with it, yes. right? Yeah. To beat the king <laughs> to the destination. Whatever it happens to be, Correct. it is about receiving and then doing, right? So I know when I talk to people about being versus doing, they're like, so I'm not supposed to do? I'm like, no, that is not what I'm saying. Just like, I'm not telling you not to prepare. Correct. I'm just saying once you get to the delivery, there has to be more trust and faith in co-creating. Because when we don't have that trust and faith, what we're creating from is ego. You know, um, something's just hitting me also right now that there. So Kimberly says submission precedes acceleration. Uh, Kimberly yes. Winborn, and which, yes. which, which is so true. You have to submit. Yes, girl. Um, the, 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 and being in a moment, having your papers, et cetera, it's not only for speakers. It's not only for coaches. It's not only for these businesses that deal with improving life, life um, professional development, etc. It's every single thing a journalist can be in a moment, a, uh, a scientist can be in a moment, a, a, a chef who's, who's fixing something and then he gets inspired. That's what it is. It's inspiration. When you get inspired, Stay in your lean if you're a chef. Stay in your inspired chef lean, and you start putting spices together. You start putting recipes together. You start putting ingredients rather, and then you taste it. And you go, "Oh my goodness, this is the bomb!" Right? It's it's the 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 president or the CEO or um, the mechanic, the artist, and and if if we Ah, but you said it, you said it, you said it about the book originals where Martin goes and, and he goes from his soul to speak. Most, if we look at most things that are viral, so 2020 calls it viral, but in the past is the fat, popular, uh, the best. When we look at things that are the best, most of those things come from inspiration comes from huh, i think this works like what we're doing now not saying this is going to go viral yeah it's going to go viral um <laughs> we we sat down and we talked and we said hey let's let's put it out there so to you to, to people who are watching people who are listening the key is this <laughs> give yourself room give yourself room to create be inspired and if you're not inspired Dare I dare to say pause. Pause and wait for inspiration. And when I say pause, it doesn't mean, as you said, it doesn't mean just wait. Actively wait, meaning have the brain running, have it running, have it running, and then the delivery comes, the inspiration comes at the delivery. Ay, ay, ay. Oh, you're on fire today. I love it. You you were right. Like there was a <laughs> do the dance. <laughs> Thank you. I'm telling you, sis. Okay. I'm telling you. I'm gotta, you got to celebrate. You got to celebrate. Yes. You know, I always tell people that take that time. I mean, some people may get on here and go, these people are a bunch of goofballs. And you know what we are. And we're having a great time. And I think that's, that's the key piece is we know we're in our genius and everybody is a genius. Right? Einstein even said it. And he's one of the number one geniuses we know about in history. Einstein said, everyone's a genius. But if we tell a fish and that, no, if we judge a fish by its mm. ability to climb a tree, mm. it will spend its entire life thinking it's stupid. Ooh. Right? So when I say to people, you're a genius, they're like, no, I'm not a genius. Cause we're thinking, you know, in, in text, you know, intellectual property, we're thinking right. our intelligence, right? Our IQ. But the number one, do you know what the number one characteristic trait that's looked for in leaders right now? Off you know me. what it is? Talk to me. High EQ, mm. not IQ, right? Yes. Emotional intelligence. Yes. Right. So genius is not. I mean, we had a very kind of uh, 
truncated vision of genius for a long time. Mm. You know, genius is so many things we, and we are all genius. The key is we need to be able to determine and define what that is, not what it isn't. Yes. Right. Not that we are genius or we aren't genius. Correct. Right. It's that we are and how. And, and as soon as we do that, then leaning in and owning it means also trusting that it's not just going to go away. Mm. You know, so many people identify with things that go away. Money, power, relationships, looks. <laughs> you know, it's like over time, those things could go away. Sometimes it's a roller coaster. They come, they go, they come, they go, they come, they go. But when we hinge our identity on who we are, mm. that never goes anywhere. We can't mm. not be who we are. Oh, Tracy, 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 stop, Tracy, stop, stop, Tracy, stop. So <laughs> t- today, you know, I always, people always want to ask, you know, um, tell me about yourself, who you are. And uh, we always say what we do in the in the in the in the in the process of saying who we are and what you do is not who you are (laughs) you are so bigger than being an engineer so bigger than being a coach so bigger than being a chef so bigger than being a a a scientist or whatever you do you are bigger than that Um, because as you said it fades away and it goes back to to me pre-2011. <laughs> pre-2011, you ask a woman who is, oh, I'm a software engineer, I'm a business manager, this is what I do. And I thought about this. Let me, let me cue you in on this. I told you how I would go in a room and say, hey, I make more money than 80, 90% of you, right? That was a complex. That was some kind of serious complex I had. How, how in the world can you go into a room and think your worth is based on the money you make? But you see, God saw all of that stuff, that arrogance, that pride, that um, self-righteous. I, I was outside going, hi, how are you? Ta-da. Not knowing I was the worst you understand me? The worst. And when I say worst, I'm just letting you know, not, not, not the worst human being, but I, I was pharisaic, right? I would come out and be, hee hee, but I'm thinking, huh, I'm this, I'm that. But then God surely removed every single thing, every single money, house, car, everything I perceived who I was. So today when they ask me, hey, Tell me who you are. Like, I'm a child of God. I'm a woman. And I just love to engage people to bring value. Isn't that so much more than what you do rather than who you are? And who you are is that genius, as you said. That genius that's in you, that's deep in you, that you can't help it is you give it for free. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I, I, in my presentation the other day, the final, cause I used a whole bunch of quotes by other people. So the final slide was a quote by myself, there by you, me. There you go. And, uh, and it was, you don't have to have anything to be who you are and you are genius, right? You are valuable. You don't have to have anything to be who you are. Right. And I think that that, that kind of sums up what you just said, you know, in, in this idea of identification through through the external stuff, right? Um, Or even the internal stuff like power, right? I have power, you know, I have these people who look up to me or whatever. Um, It's not, I mean, none of us are here for that stuff. (laughs) Like, we're not here to serve the stuff. Well, we know what happens when we serve the stuff. You have more stuff, you have more responsibility. You know, it's like the more stuff you have, the more you have to take care of, mm. you know, and I think that, that, that that's a key piece. But don't you think what you just described about the stuff going away, don't you think that's what a lot of people are being dealt right now with what we're going through? Mm. Mm. I mean, we're mm. talking, I was listening to this woman who was talking about, you know, people throw around this idea or this, uh, this, this thing, you know, the awakening, we're awakening. She's like, what does that mean? She's like, I'll tell you what I think it means is we're waking up 
to the fact that life isn't about the stuff we maybe thought it was about or that we were conditioned to believe it was about. You know, the Great Awakening is about things going away so that we can see perspective. Because when, when we get pushed out of what we're used to being hijacked by, we suddenly have perspective. And we can look at it from all these different angles that we weren't seeing because we were in it, right? We were mm. like this in it. So that's the piece that all of us right now, and depending on who was already waking up before all this happened, you know, people are, you know, when I made some of the comments I was making, I was like, I know this might be a big triggering because yes, we still need to pay bills and yes, we still need to figure it out. But if we don't have at the root, the foundation mm. of this house that we're constructing and, you know, architecting, then it's going to crumble. And the base is that sense of owner. It's not only sense of and de definition of, but ownership of mm. what is true, not what is illusionary. Correct. Right. And if we're, think about it, if you're building your home based on beliefs that you exist to have money and power and winning and, and being better than it, what kind of house are you building? If that's your foundation. Correct. Correct. Right. Correct. What is that house going to look like? I, I, and I think a lot of people, again, totally unconsciously have built homes like that. And now brick by brick and sometimes whole wall by wall, it's coming down and it is incredibly jarring and scary and is causing a lot of fear and anxiety. And I'm saying, yes, and you're choosing because the only thing we have control over is our reaction to the mm. reality that we're experiencing. Mm. So we're choosing fear. People are like, well, what else? How else would you react? Well, it depends on how awake you are. So I'm not judging the reaction. I'm yeah. simply saying it's a choice, wow. right? And when we think we don't have a choice, oh, I'm being forced into my home. I'm being forced to wear a mask. I'm being forced you know, out of my industry because it doesn't exist right now. I'm being forced. That's a victim mentality. Mm. That may be the reality that you're seeing, but you still have the choice of changing the story you tell yourself about it. Mm. Mm. And mm. that's not insensitive, folks. That's very loving, oh. right? This is loving language. This isn't, I'm, you know, they, they go, well, who are you? Like, are you sitting pretty and, you know, it's easy for right. you because you're not out of a job. Oh, well, trust me, I'm 50% down in my clientele right now than where I was last year. Like, mm. we're all struggling to some Correct. extent. Correct. But it's not going to help me to continue to focus on that. Oh, everybody's going away. Everybody's going away. Not enough. Lack mentality. It's not going to, it's certainly not going to take me to the next level. Correct. Right. And so perspective, yes, we still need to make mm. things work, but if we're doing it from a foundation that's built on this concept, if I'm not winning, I'm losing, we're not going to get there. We're not going to change things. We're not going to rewrite history nope. we're going to repeat history Correct. and if we look at the times when we were going through this kind of thing before it got a heck of a lot more uncomfortable before we finally came out of it Correct. so we can choose to go that route again or we could choose to wake up and say even if my experience in the moment right now is uncomfortable i'm not going to catastrophize it Correct. i'm not going to take what's Correct. merely uncomfortable and make it into dangerous there's a book I'm reading right now. I'm sorry. I am hot on a topic now. Hey, hey, There's a book I'm hey, reading right now hey. called The Coddling of the American Mind that I think everybody should read. Two authors, both work on university um, campuses, and they're really, their research comes from these cam like American campuses. But mm -hmm. this isn't just a, an age thing. I see this as a societal thing because I see people in their 50s doing this too right. but that what they're finding is that we're becoming more fragile right that people people are instead of being resilient right and and working through things and and saying oh this is uncomfortable but i'm going to persevere they're saying this is uncomfortable you're triggering me stop right. yes. yes you need to make it better you need to make me right. comfortable because i don't want to be triggered because i'm already anxious enough mm. do you know most 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 that was the language used most people out there in college are on some something, whether it's alcohol, regular alcohol, some sort of drug or combination of drugs for anxiety or depression. Mm. Mm. Kids, right? These are still college kids. They're yeah. kids. 
Yeah. Right. And so they're so fragile that somebody says something the wrong way or they get maybe they have to read a text about something in history that's Correct. disturbing to them. And they're like, I don't want to have to read this. It's triggering me. Correct. Yeah. And then we're not learning to be resilient because instead of telling ourselves that it's uncomfortable, we're telling ourselves it's dangerous. Correct. 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 We're telling ourselves a story. We're telling ourselves. It is not by nature dangerous, folks. It's uncomfortable. Yes. Regardless yeah. of what you've been through, it may be highly uncomfortable. And you may need some sort of support to be able to work through it. But if you don't work through it, guess what? You got to feel the heal. You got to own it to be able to move through it. Correct. Right? If we keep distracting ourselves and telling the world that they've got to make it pretty and nice and comfortable for us, we will mm -hmm. never learn that. We will never mm -hmm. heal. We'll just keep bouncing around from discomfort zone to another discomfort zone. The, the, diamond, the diamond comes when the coal is pressurized you know and i and i have let me let me go over a couple of things so cornelius kirk hey thanks for watching hey, hey cornelius <laughs> uh, he says mindset is everything which which is definitely true barbara goes in with i think that the gift of COVID is making people slow down so they so they have time to think which is exactly what you were saying uh barbara, barbara goes again hey barbara's gotta get a shirt girl barbara's gotta <laughs> Shirt and a hat. Um, college and universities have failed students, you know, by teaching them what they think instead of teaching them to think. Wow. And lastly, Walter goes in, Walter Honeycutt says, thanks, Walter. Thanks for coming in and stopping by. That's so correct. I see it all the time in the classroom. Um, I, and I, you know, I don't have any, any references but myself you know, stories. There are stories of other people that I know, but I love to give stories of myself, me, 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 because you know what? I have the authority. <laughs> uh, I remember, you know, just that entire period, 2012 to 2016, 17, could even put 18 in there, when the pressures of life came, right? And the pressures meaning the six-figure job was gone, the the um, hi, Mr. Port. Can you fix this? Can you do this? Help us come to this meeting. Go here. Go there. Right? I wasn't hearing none of those words that I heard in the past. Uh, no, no money in the pocket, etc. And it and it boiled down to to so-called depression. And as you said, it was uncomfortable. And I would have thoughts of, hey, I'm worth more. To my family, to my kids now with the life insurance policy, so I could, you know, kill myself and all, all would be well with them. Uh, but little did I know that that process wasn't, and this is for people who are going through, you know, whatever you're going through right now. Little did I know that that process was more of, it wasn't depression, but I always say it was a compressive operation, it was compression right? Because the difference between depression, between depression and compression is depression kills. Depression, it depresses you. It depresses you, depresses you, and goes down. Compression, though, is the, the, the coming to a particular pressure point and keeping it at that pressure point until the right oil comes. So olive oil, you compress olives and it says if you do it too much, it gets bitter. If you do it at a particular, it gets, it tastes better. At different pressure points, different things come out, right? So God knows exactly the pressure that's needed in order for you and my, or you to get out of that compressive state because there are people out there who are going through it who may be depressive, be in depression and die, but you have the oil to pour on that depression so that they see the light and understand that, oh, if you, Walwyn, if you, Tracy, if you, Barbara, if you, Walter, if you, Kenny, comes, came out of that and you're here standing, huh, I can come out of that. So when we are going through our uncomfortables, when we're going through our 
dangers, when we're going through those things that we perceive, oh, woe is me. I cannot believe this is happening to me. Pause. Pause and say, I'm going to be the one who will come out and write that book. I'm going to be the one who will come out and get on a podcast. I will be the one who will write the essays, who will, 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 will be the, the bomb to soothe the ones who never can come out of this. I'm going to be strong. Hey, Tracy, you got the last word. And please don't do last week. Don't do last week. You <laughs> well, I have the last word, so I don't need to do last week. No. <laughs> I shout, I might be the last one. I had to get all up in my face. You are so funny. I just, I don't really have any last words, honestly. I mean, I just think what I just have to honor you and say what has come out of your mouth today and through you today has been nothing short of brilliant. Like what? And, you know, I'm just honored to be in that space with you because I think what I, I know, what we're doing here comes from our hearts, it comes from our souls, it comes from our spirits. I mean, we're, it's, we have a passion for showing up, not only for ourselves, but for mm -hmm. others. And, you know, I think what you shared today, like all I can do is put a frame around it, you know, is, is just really exactly what the, I mean, kind of perfect demonstration of the exact points that we've been making, mm -hmm. not just today, but I think since we started the eavesdrop conversations. And so I just want to, to thank you for being my partner in this. Ah, uh, Tracy Phillips, thank you once again. What I want, oh, I want, I knew it, I knew it. Thank you, thank you. Don't make a black man blush, girl. Don't make a black man blush, it's bad. I'd have to work real hard. <laughs> Oof. Um, you know, like Beer would say, oh, you're making his head big, and then poof, it goes back down, right? But we, we, we're, we've been doing this for, what, this is the 11th episode, right? And we are looking to just transfer the audio into podcasts. So we have work to do, Tracy, you and I, and we're going to do it. We will outsource it when we start getting that income from this. <laughs> uh, but, but what I think is um, we have been doing Facebook and YouTube, and we will be doing, and it's been on my private YouTube page, we will be transferring to our um, eavesdrop YouTube page. But also, I've been working on the Instagram, and I was able to, and not, not, not our Instagram page, but what I'll do, you know what, we should do an Instagram page, but we always take it easy. So what we'll do is, I did the video in the format for IGTV, and after this, I'm going to be shooting you our first, or no, the second episode for you to put on your Instagram page, and I'll put it on mine also. So, hey. And it, hey, it, it's tight. I love it. That was your was that your surprise? That was my surprise for oh my you. God. I was gonna ask you, I was like, we need the surprise. <laughs> I am so excited. Oh my gosh, I love it. Well, you know, he knows and all you probably know at this point. I am not very good with technology. So I really love, but I'm in growth mindset, so it's what I can learn. I may not be good, but I can learn. That's what's so exciting for me too, because I'm learning so much, you know, about how to show up and where to show up and how to do it right. And, you know, we get to mm -hmm. learn as we go. And I think right. that's the giveaway today is like, you know, just trust that, you know, the step is going to end in the right place, even if it doesn't seem perfect. Mm. Wow. So what are you going to call this one? Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> um. <laughs> Um, dot, dot, dot. <laughs>